Hello and welcome to the 61st video in the series for beginners programming in C. So this is the final video with the introduction to header files and we're going to talk about inclusion guards and this is sort of the last sort of gotcha that, but the most important one and by the end of this video hopefully you'll have an idea of how you're supposed to actually structure your header files. I've started with the program from the end of the last video so if you haven't watched that one download the zip file from that um, and you'll need to add in shield.c and shield.h if you don't have them already. Shield.c has an include for shield.h in it to include that header file. Main.c looks exactly like it did printing our global to the screen and including definitions.h. Definitions.h has the our global and definitions.c includes definitions.h and sets our global to 10. So now let's imagine we are furthering our program and we're going to define a, a new type as you've seen uh, done in previous videos in this series, uh, structure and we'll just call it sdata because we're not going to do anything with it um, and I'll just put a, a just for, sort of for completion let's just put a num in there so that we have an integer in our structure. And let's say that in shield.c uh, or shield, sorry, in the shield, we want to actually make a new function and this function will be called shield data. And this function will take in our data structure type, s underscore data, and do something with it. So I've got the function definition in the header and we'll drop the body of the function then a definition into the C file and I don't know we'll just say data.num equals 10. We're not going to do anything with that. In fact you could probably just watch this video and not really need to type the code. Now if I try and compile this program you should realize already it's not going to compile and it's because we have an unknown data type and that of course is because we haven't actually included the header file with the definition of this structure inside here. So what we need to do then in shield.h, and there's already the line inside main so I can copy, is actually at the top, top here include definitions.h because we need the definition for the data structure here. So now if I bring across the program, uh, the terminal and compile, the program compiles and indeed runs OK. Excellent. However, let's imagine that we have our shield data function but we actually have another function we want to write here um, and again it's better just to watch and not type but there's another function and this doesn't use the data structure but does something else and let's say that we need this function inside main.c and in fact now I've said don't type some code I'm going to because it's a little easier so let's say um, int and we'll call it get shield value and this will just return again um, a number because I don't want to get this quick, it's about the example. So we have here get shield value, of course, that's the function definition, it needs to be inside the code file. Uh, and we just want the declaration of it here, like so. Okay, good. So we've got get shield value. And now what we want to do is inside main, we want to print the shield value. So we have um, shield value, like so. And that means we'll need to call this function get shield value, but it means obviously we'll also need to include shield.h so that we know about that function. And let's have a look what happens when I try to compile the program now. And you'll see here that oh, there's a couple of things. One's this here, I'll deal with this. Hang on a minute, let me just clean up what I've done there. What have I uh, done wrong? int get shield value return 100 get shield value main.c oh that's a function of course okay I'll just bring this across and compile again sorry so now we've compiled and here's the important part we've got an error saying that we've redefined our s underscore data and the question is is how have we done that redefinition of s underscore data well what's actually happened is we've defined it inside here shield.h is including the code in definitions.h and whilst we remember it's okay to, so long as we don't put the value there, declare this multiple times in effect, our intention to use an integer's worth of space for a variable called our global. Type definitions and 
many other things um, that I won't go into can only be defined once so declared once much like when we set the value of our global or the code for a function that can only happen once so we've included in shield.h already our definition from definitions.h of s data and in main.c we're including definitions.h so we've got this definition in here but we're also including shield.h and remember that shield.h also includes definitions.h so definitions.h is effectively being included twice inside main and that leads us then to have the error of the double definition of this structure if I just for a moment take out the call to get shield value so I can show you this another way and take out the include for main here like this and just recompile the program it should compile now and now what I'm going to do is just take a structure definition which we've got here I'm just going to define another type of structure uh, just call it snum because it's not important and define this type twice inside main here and now try and compile the program that's just compiled you'll see that we get the redefinition error exactly as we had before so we can't define this type twice and that was exactly what was happening when we were including shield.h because it was already included definitions.h which had the definition then of this structure so the question is is how do we get around that and I hope that's made sense so far if it hasn't then just go through it because it's the most important thing with header files and the way we get around that is using something called an inclusion guard and this is something you should include in all of your header files so in the previous two videos in this introduction these were missing but they should always be in your header files and what you do is you say if ndf which is if not defined and now you need to give um, um, a, a sort of a named definition so if something isn't defined and usually the way it's done I mean there are various standards for this but it's to say something like if not defined with a double underscore definitions underscore H and a double underscore and the reason is you want to try and create something unique here that won't be found in any other files or um, that will be included in your program remembering of course that you're also including the standard library header files as well which have their own include guards and macro definitions and values and things so you want to hope that you've got something here that's unique otherwise you could end up with problems and usually you would have your own kind of specified unique uh, headers I don't know so blue feeder blue fever head or something like that with an underscore then would pretty much guarantee that it was uh, going to be unique so what I will have then is say if we've not defined definitions underscore H I'll put a double on the end there then we'll define it and it's now been defined the rest of the code will be processed by the preprocessor and then we put our end if on the end and what will happen is the first time the preprocessor comes across this file definitions.h it'll say have I already got this defined no so I'll define it and then um, process the uh, instructions inside here so make the space for our global define our structure type the next time it comes across definitions.h so that would have been through main here let's say it'll say have I defined this yes I have so therefore I'll just ignore the rest of this because we're saying if it's not defined then do this code so it has the effect of only having this the code that's inside these guards here then processed once by the preprocessor and the error disappears so now I've put that include guard in I should now be able to compile the program and you can see indeed the program compiles and will run OK the shield value of 100 so the take home here then is you should put these include guards around all of your header files and where problems start if you haven't done it is when you're including header files inside header files which is often uh, the case that you'll need to do as your programs get more and more complicated I'm just adding the include guards to uh, shield here I'll just call it shield underscore h like so 
So you're saying if that's not defined, then process the code underneath, which the first step is is to define it, which means next time this file is pre-processed, then this will be ignored because it's already defined. So that's it then for the introduction to header files. And like I said, the biggest take home is is you make all your declarations, so your prototypes, they're called of your of your functions here of your variables that you want to be global like so but when you define either the code for your function or like so or you define the value for your variable that goes inside a code file which includes its respective header file and the header files should always have these include cards around them so that you never end up with these um, items declared more than once and conflicts when you're compiling the program and whenever you see when you um, compile something like error redefinition or wherever we've got somewhere up here I think duplicate symbol or something I can't can't find it now of course um, but whenever you see duplicate symbol or, or anything like this this means that something's gone astray with your header files so you need to be um, careful of that and the other thing you also need to be careful of is what's called circular header files which I won't go into in this video series because um, it's not really it's, it, well, it's, it's rare that it happens but it should be fairly obvious but it's where you've got a header file included in another header file and vice versa so that one requires the other it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation so you've got definitions.h uh, dif uh, included in here because you need s data but then so you've got a structure in here that's needed inside definitions.h so you would have um, oh in fact come on let me do a, an example of this before I finish off this video so let's take another structure and let's define a shield structure uh, inside here so we've got s underscore shield structure and now we need to write a function inside definitions.h or inside definitions that makes use of that shield structure so we would have a void and then we'll just call it make use and again you really don't need to type the code here it's just some explanation um, and we're going to make use of our shield structure so I've got my prototype defined there and then I'm just going to do some define the function body inside the C file which is not going to do anything because we're not going to do anything for now the problem is of course this won't compile if I go to compile the program, it doesn't, of course, know in definitions.h what an s underscore shield is. And that means that I need to actually include shield inside definitions.h. Now, if I come to compile the program here, we've got unknown type uh, s underscore shield here. And the reason... Um, the reason is, it says that, I'll just bring the terminal back, it says here in file included from line 4 of shield.h well the problem is inside shield.h we've included definitions.h but that includes shield.h so there's a, a circular thing there where both of them require the definitions um, of each other so that's something else you have to be careful of in your programs and that can also when you've got bigger more complicated programs with lots and lots of header files um, lead to obviously to problems so you have to also have to put some thought into the planning of how you define all your definitions and where you want to be able to use them inside your program okay so I'll leave that actually this code in its error state here uh, available for download so you can actually see then why that error um, is created. So that ends the sort of three video introduction to header files. I hope it was um, clear. If it's not, then please put a comment and explain why it wasn't clear or what you want um, to be explained in a little bit more detail. Um, but the, essentially the take home is just to reiterate the point, put some includes guards around it and make sure you only define anything you're defining once, never more than once, and you should be okay. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.